love him unless, you know, he hasn't met our guest yet, but he's a good guy in case you are curious. He's our Area 35 director. So he oversees all of our local clubs, Annapolis, Glen Burnie, Verna Park. So he's a big hit honcho here. He's going to give us a speech about what it means to be committed to Toastmasters and crossing the line and getting the various awards that we offer at Toastmasters. So we have the traditional program and the Pathways program, which we're offering for our new members. It helps you develop your speaking skills um, in a much more quick, quicker way than the traditional program does. Uh, Joey gave me an introduction that I forgot to do. <laughs> what kind of student were you? Were you a straight-A student in college? Were you magnum cum laude? Uh, your success at finishing and crossing the line is, has to do with your commitment to a project in the Toastmasters. So without further ado, let me introduce Joey with Making the Commitment. <laughs> I was in the United States Army and I was brainwashed. I was brainwashed in the sense of I was forced to learn something. I was forced to go places I didn't want to go. And I was forced to live out in the field. Was this a bad thing? Absolutely not. Because the purpose of this forced learning, of this brainwashing, was to create a situation to make me a smarter thinker. An example can be my three general orders. The three general orders is basically the foundation that rules a soldier from the very beginning. And it's the first time they actually let me be in charge of something. And the three general orders are, I will guard everything within the limits of my post and quit my post only when properly relieved. Let's put that in example. Joey, watch that pole. Make sure it doesn't move. <laughs> That's general order number one. General order number two. I will obey my special orders and perform all my duties in a military manner. Joey, watch that pole. Ping it every two minutes to make sure it's still hollow. <laughs> and I have to follow that order. And my third general order is, which is the most important, I will obey my special orders and report violations and emergencies not covered in my special instructions to the commander of the relief. What that means is while I'm guarding and doing my job, if I see something suspicious, if something happens, I need to let someone know. Let's give an example. I'm on guard duty, and I'm in my binoculars. I look across the field. I see the enemy moving. I tell my sergeant of the guard, and then he or she will take the appropriate action to stop that advancement. I have my binoculars. I'm scanning my area. And I see the grass moving, but I don't know what it is. Will I leave my post? Absolutely not. When you think about general orders, those are something that's ingrained in a soldier. Another thing that we learn is also what's called the oath of enlistment. What that is, is when a person decides to stay in the military, they will say an oath. And this oath is basically something that you don't necessarily have to remember, but you'll be reciting it. Let's give an example. Raise your right hand. State your first and last name. I, I, I do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. 
and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. You can put your hands down. I'll finish it. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed above me according to regulations and the uniform code of military justice. That's something that's been ingrained in me. And I thought to myself, does Toastmasters have something similar? Of course not. Not at all. I was wrong. Toastmaster does. But it doesn't necessarily mean nothing unless it's ingrained in your head. Let's take for an example. The mission of a Toastmasters club. That's something that we think about because if you become members, we have a mission that you can take advantage of. And the mission of a Toastmasters club is to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning environment in which every member has the opportunity to develop communications and leadership skills, which in turn, now here's the key thing, fosters self-confidence and personal growth. That's what Toastmasters bring to you. But let's go one step further. Toastmasters also has something that's called the Toastmasters Promise. We just changed our educational program that's called Pathways. Before, we had two tracks, which was the leadership track and the communication track. Now we have 10 paths. And those folks who decide to join our club tonight, you're getting in the groundbreaking of something new that Toastmaster is offering called Pathways. And I'm going to use Pathways and connect it with what we call the Toastmaster's Promise. I didn't memorize it. <laughs> the Toastmaster's Promise. And this is for you. Making a commitment. Making a commitment to attend clubs meeting regularly. Because if you attend clubs meeting regularly, you're learning strategic leadership, but more importantly, leadership development. To prepare all my speeches to the best of my ability, basing them on projects in communication and the leadership program, and it goes on and on, and pathways. This builds public speaking, and it leads to presentation mastery. Clyde started somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere. And as you continue to move forward, you'll get the benefits. And we have a lot of other different things in the Toastmaster Promise. But this is one I want to make sure I talk to you tonight about. It's called making a commitment to bring guests to a club meeting so they can benefit from the Toastmasters what membership offers. Let's face it. We're all learning. We're all growing. We're all developing. It's good for us. Let's invite guests to do the same. Let's take for an example. If you go down to Grove's and if they are selling chickens for 50 cents a pound, you may go and buy 20 of them and you'll call free. Hey, this chicken's on sale. Because we spread the word because we're getting a good deal. Her chicken <coughs> is working fine. And that's what Toastmasters will do for us. Just like a soldier's taking pride in knowing their general orders in the oath of enlistment, a Toastmasters can do the same thing if they remember what the mission of a Toastmaster club is and a Toastmasters promise. Mr. Toastmaster of the day. <laughs> 